This is Saturday Morning Mysteries. And we're your hosts, Alexis and Grace. Quick note, Grace's audio is a bit messed up this episode, entirely my own fault. So apologies, but we hope you still enjoy this episode. Hello, good morning, and welcome back to another episode of Saturday Morning Mysteries, where we are your hosts. I'm Grace. And I'm Alexis. And we are back with our new show, The Funky Phantom. Uh, This week, Alexis will be telling us her first uh, episode of the show. If you guys recall, last Mm -hmm. episode, I had strictly told her not to watch it before I did my episode because I wanted her her to share the type of reactions that you all would be having in all of my descriptions. But now she has obviously watched it, I would assume, for her first episode. (laughs) But Oops, nope, I forgot. She could wing it. I'd believe her because this show is also crazy because it's yeah, from the 70s. It's so ridiculous. Show. Yeah. I'd be like, this mm-hmm. makes sense. Um, so with that, I'll pass it over to you. I'd love to get your first impressions of this show and then hear oh, your episode. Boy. Or weep them in. I don't know. Well, Live your best life. You tell well, me. <laughs> I am. Thank you. I'm still hungover <laughs> from the piranha plot, so I'm still living <laughs> my best life, actually, yes, a few weeks yes. back. We're deeply in that era um, still. So I will say you did a great job last week and, Thank you. you know, warming us up. Yeah. You know, toss, toss. No, you know, you can brag. You did a great job. You did. I think you did absolutely everything that any reasonable person could do to prepare one for this show mm, thank before <laughs> diving into it. But might I still say no one could do anything to prepare me fully for this show, <laughs> given even everything you did and how much, how much I love the main character, the namesake, yes. the funky phantom himself, yes. Muddle Um, I think in this, I don't say this lightly. I love Scooby-Doo, like the character Scooby himself. Uh-huh. But Mudsy, my, he's he's in a close second now. It's like maybe him, Courage, and Mudsy for oh. different, or Scooby, Courage, and Mudsy, and like different reasons yes, <laughs> as to why I think they strong. are the best. Exactly. They all have got their own thing. They bring their own thing to the table. And Mudsy's, yeah. oh, it is sass and fabula, fabulosity to the <laughs> max. So... I'm very excited for yes. this show. Thank you for making me wait. It was worth it. <laughs> um, and today's episode is pretty pretty ridiculous, on par with your last episode. Good. Today, we're going to talk about uh, episode two. As per usual, you do episode Good. one, and I'm just like, all right, I'll do episode two then. <laughs> and this one came out September 18th, 1971. And the name of the episode, it's called Air Scare. So, how is air spelled? H E I R. Okay, got it. So again, that I believe important. this is two episodes for me in a row where I'm talking about wills. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, my last episode of Jabberjaw was the one where Jabber got that will, or he was willed the uh, gold mine or whatever. In this one, we've got another air coming in. Didn't we'll you talk also about do this- it. A Scooby Doo like winter one, yeah, a Scooby Doo one and a Rescue <laughs> Rangers one. So I think well, the thing here is that any, any, it's weird, and I didn't even do that well in Wills and Estates either. <laughs> so I don't know why, but anytime I see a will come up in a plot, I'm gonna do that episode. That's just like the new rule, I guess, for me. If there's a will and a gerbil, a- I'm on it. <laughs> if there's a will, if there's a will there's and a, a gerbil, way. there's a way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so okay i did break this down also into five parts again just because now it's easier for my mind but i did right. not name these ones so yeah. i'm just gonna say part one okay, of today's great. episode it starts as most of the other episodes of this show start with the gang driving their dune buggy which i noticed is also called the loony dooney i don't know if you mentioned that last week <laughs> but it did but that's painted. great <laughs> It's painted on it. It has it like painted on the door. <laughs> yeah. And there's like Hell an American yeah. flag or actually it's not an American flag. It kind of yeah, looks like a Cuban like... flag or something because it's only like one star. Yeah. It's like like an OG flag. But yeah, I agree. Definitely. It's a Cuban flag. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 
this the the dune buggy's all over the place quite frankly the and it's just like they put a bunch the, it is very loony the loony dooney so anyway they're driving this dune buggy deep through a dark scary forest it's late at night and eventually they realize that they are lost and as they're all arguing about who essentially the better driver is who's the <laughs> smartest like the things they're always arguing over who huh. April should be dating. <laughs> they throw that in there. <laughs> um, Skip, who is, who is the one driving, he accidentally drives the dune buggy directly into a river. Oops, like classic mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the best driver? Yeah. April, okay, so you see how my parking driver. skills are? <laughs> maybe I'm not the best driver, but April, shouldn't you still date me? Yeah. Because April, I believe that women are also great drivers. So I think you should do the driving. See, look, men can't even drive, April. Yeah. But you could. So as the dune buggy is like parked, he- parked headfirst into this river, Skip tells Mudsy and Boo to go like walk around the forest to see like where they are or if they can figure out like where to find help or directions Mm -hmm. on how to not only get out of this river but also get out of these uh dark scary woods Mm -hmm. and so Mudsy and Boo they're scoping out the situation they're walking around and because it's dark much like Skip did they find themselves like right into a river or right into a river as well they just like fall right in and as they're kind of like walking or wading out of this river, although you say great, which is funny, but like they're ghosts. So like, do they even get wet like, at the same time? So nothing <laughs> happens. I know. So okay, they just float right back out. And also like I was they, like, why are they sending them to go find help? People are going to not help them. They're ghosts. They're going to freak out if they see them. They're just going to like have a heart attack and die. So the only people that could help them get just like die, drop down exactly. in the little forest. Yeah. That honestly, you know, put it, well, d- no, don't put a pin in that. Like this is just, this is what they do. We know this by now. We're only two episodes in and they, <laughs> they put yeah. too much faith in Mudsy and Boo and like forget that people can't interact with them sometimes. Yeah. Anyways. Although I guess it's smart to be like, we're in an unknown, terrifying place where like, scary things could be you're already dead mm-hmm. you know lost us go ahead this is true a bear you can't kill back. you you're already yeah. dead yeah you and, but you can at the same time go. exactly yell to us that a bear is coming yeah so yeah. yeah they fall into this river or like this marshy water and soon after as mudsy is saying something like complaining about his feet getting wet or something like that he then starts to shake and gets very scared as he hears groaning and this like loud kind of roaring coming from mm-hmm. the other side of the marsh. And he looks up and he sees actually what would be very, very terrifying, a massive like marsh monster, swamp oh. thing looking creature or man thing, depending on which comics you read, <laughs> just covered, draped in like long shaggy moss slowly just like wading its way through this water but kind of like stomping at the same time so it's like shaking the ground but splashing and just to show how fucking big this thing is and it's walking in like a zombie like stare or state Mm -hmm. yeah very scary like mindless almost Mm -hmm. and so this thing obviously scares the bejesus out of mudsy and boo (laughs) And so they run back to the rest of the gang and try to tell them about this monster. But the gang, like, obviously is not believing them. Like, oh, yeah, sure, sure, a monster. It was probably just that tree over there or something. But Wow, so they're going to send him out for information and then not believe him. Literally, like, okay, I'm pretty sure it's Augie who discredits him so quickly. Like, sure, you saw that tree. And this is the first of many times in this episode that Augie (laughs) is such an asshole. He just... Interesting. (laughs) Yeah, April, I hope you're watching. (laughs) He is a jock. jock. Skip's like, yeah, Augie, you're so mean. Yeah. (laughs) So... This, uh, yeah, the the gang, they they don't believe Mudsy and Boo. And they're like, look, dude, you're going crazy. You're scared. It's nothing. It's just like the trees and stuff around here. And April, mm-hmm. meanwhile, she's like, okay, guys, shut up. Stop arguing. Look on top of that hill over there. There's a massive mansion and the lights are on inside. So maybe if we go up there, the homeowners 
are going to give us some help and or give us directions on how to get out of here. Because, also, yes, what if this just always go to the stranger's tur- house? Yeah. What if this just suddenly turned into Rocky Horror Picture Show, but starring Mudsy? Who we already said could have in his heyday been played by Sir Tim Curry. Tim Curry. Exactly. So it's all coming full circle. God, what I would pay for both Tim Curry, Tim Curry playing both roles <laughs> in that film. Anyways. You like see him doing the outfit changes. <laughs> yeah. When a girl can dream. Uh, that's all we can do. But yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to dream hard. Part two. <laughs> right. <laughs> the house on the hill. Yes. Oh, damn. Why didn't I think of that? I got you. Well, part two. The house on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. Such a good name. <laughs> so the gang, they get to this house, which again, it's like a classic Hanna-Barbera, like old, decrepit looking mansion. It's not like some glamorous place where one would typically be like, oh, yes, they look like they would be very friendly and would help us <laughs> out or would, you know, have a nice towel or something blanket to keep us warm. Like, no, this place looks like it probably has holes in the walls. And like, <laughs> <laughs> like homeless people maybe like Mold. with a shiv in there that you have to like <laughs> yeah avoid <laughs> and they're like yes this place looks perfect but when they get up there they get a better look at it and they agree they're like okay no this maybe was not the right place to come to yeah <laughs> this looks yeah. terrifying and they're all kind of arguing like what well, like who's gonna who's gonna knock on the door like i don't want to <laughs> knock you knock i don't want to knock uh-huh. but eventually none of them have to knock and the door just opens up on its own uh and again, in classic Hanna Barbera fashion, a very terrifying looking butler opens the yes. door. And Describe he, him to me. He looks literally, literally exactly like the butler from that one episode of Scooby Doo. He had a crazy name that we were making Was fun like of. The really he, tall, like long face. Yeah, long face, like kind of like you know, a little bit of black hair, but mostly bald. Yeah. Um, so they, it's gosh. the same butler. They just changed his height somewhat. Basically, basically. Yeah. They made him a little bit shorter and made his face like a li- his cheeks a little bit like fatter. But other than yeah. that, that's it. He <laughs> looks very color. angry and upset, though, as cool. as per usual. Yeah. Yep. Same skin color, everything like the ugh, like it, it, <laughs> Not only did I jump when he gets on the screen, <laughs> they but do. the kids also did. They all <laughs> jump like, whoa. Which, maybe that's why this guy looks so angry and is very yeah, unwelcoming rude. to them. Because <laughs> as soon as he opens the door, before the kids can even say anything, he just tells them to go away. Like he doesn't say, well, he didn't say hello. He doesn't say, who are you? He just says, go away. And Skip, he's a little nervous now and like, well, we just we were just looking to like figure out where we are. Like we just want to know where we are. And the butler mm. says, well, you aren't wanted here. And then <laughs> like starts, starts to shut the door on their face, which like, yeah, savage and rude, but absolutely yeah. also respect this dude. Yes. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like, do your job. Yeah. 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 I, wanna hear I don't open know you kids. The door for them. Yeah. I would just like let them freeze out there in the cold rain or something. Like, no, oh, get out of here. Turn the lights off, everybody. They like, they see you through the window going to like, turn the lights off. Closing the blinds. <laughs> Peeking at them through it and then closing no, it. No, no. Go away. <laughs> so, yeah, hilariously, though, as soon as the butler says this, like, well, you aren't wanted here. We see from behind him appears a very young well like coiffed and suited man he comes Mm. out of the doorway and he says oh come on in fellas don't pay any attention to him (laughs) which i got a typical scenario as well oh my my paid help yeah he sucks come on in he sucks (laughs) 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 he doesn't know shit ignore (laughs) him what am i paying him for i don't even know (laughs) yeah So, yes, inside the young man, he welcomes the gang to what is apparently called Conway Mansion. In April, she thanks him for letting them in. And he responds by essentially saying like, well, this actually works perfectly because I just so happen to need some witnesses to the reading of my uncle's will. Ah. And 
that reading is conveniently happening in the next room over conveniently in two minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so this great. Is great. I don't need, I don't know who he was planning on having serve as his witnesses beforehand. The but, swamp monster. <laughs> well, yeah. He's like, we're, we were just going to leave the door open and hopefully he came in <laughs> <laughs> in time. So... <laughs> Um, so the gang, the butler, and a housemaid. And by okay. the way, the butler, we later find out the butler's name is Henry, and this housemaid, her name is Martha. Mr. Conway affectionately calls her sweet Martha. Okay. And uh, and the young Mr. Conway himself, they make their way to the dining room where the estate executor or like the lawyer, whomever, who's reading out the will, his name is Mr. Lynch. He's already in there in the dining room and he's ready to tell everyone what they've got. Mm -hmm. And so he reads aloud, you know, from this big like scroll of paper. <clears throat> That's how I'm going to do my will. <laughs> Same, right? Hold like parchment. with the little like the metal tips or something yeah. that you have to like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> scroll. Precisely. <laughs> I'm going to hire someone to read it like a, I don't know if I want to. It's got to be Harold. someone. Yeah, for some reason, I feel like it's got to be like a bishop or something like that, yeah. wearing like a big hat and yeah. all this, like, like even Harry, if I'm not religious, <laughs> uh, like ringing bells as you walk yeah. in the room, except like, I don't own shit, so it's also like, it's gonna be Aaron so Bird, you get Alexis's laptop, <laughs> Austin yeah. Bird, you get all of her pictures of Reese, the beagle, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be like such worthless stuff they will have to sit and it listen will. to all of it it would be have been a lot more if i didn't pay all the money for the herald to do <laughs> the reading and for like and the like papyrus is, paper this is historically <laughs> accurate and aged papyrus and ink the gold inlay that it was <laughs> made with to unfurl it the gold Literally horn costs, like, that the twenty trumpet. million dollars. <laughs> yeah, clay as the herald walks in, like part of the shroud of Turin is it's written <laughs> on that. They also must read it from a balcony with your family standing below, releasing like thirty doves or something, <laughs> <laughs> like roses. Yeah, it'll be. It's yeah. gonna be quite be the beautiful. event. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it'll be beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so less slightly less beautiful is the reading of this one, ah. though. Mr. Lynch, he says, I, Finmore Conway, leave to my heirs the following. Uh -oh. To my dedicated servants, I leave the sum of one dollar to be divided equally <laughs> in gratitude oh my God. for their dedicated efforts to steal my fortune. Oh, whoa, hold on. Plot twist, yeah. He had me in the first half. I was like, wow, what a dick, but whoa, what a turn of events. I was like, I need that backstory. Um, and in response to this, the maid and the butler are obviously pissed. They're like the Henry, the butler is like, ah, oh, that greedy old miser, which for a split second, I was like, you tell him, Henry. And I was like, but wait a minute. We all heard <laughs> that. Say, Don't try to steal his fortune. <laughs> I need that to be its own episode. I like do. also, was this man murdered by them? Exactly. You Trying know, to get the fortune. Save it for some wild speculation at the end because <laughs> um yeah, I mean this obviously is this is now central to the plot. I think I know we're laughing at it now, it's hilarious, but yes, this is central to the plot. Okay. Because okay. while Mr. uh or while Henry the butler and sweet Martha the maid only get 50 cents each, apparently, <laughs> out of this will, which I should have seen how much that's worth now. I guess this was 1971 or something. I mean, that it's still not this man's be... fortune. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, not even close. Because, like, yes, this house is run down, but it's still a massive mansion. Mm. And, of course, it goes to, as the next sentence of the will yeah. uh, 
describes or declares, it goes to his nephew, Michael Conway. But there is a little caveat about him getting this mansion. Uh, With it, Mr. Lynch says, also comes its secret. Oh, okay. (laughs) So at this point, maybe now the man and the butler are like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> Maybe we didn't want this mansion. What is the secret? Yeah. But yes, this this uncle, he sounds like he was quite the character. And yeah, he sounds fun. And let me tell you just how fun this guy sounds. Because Michael, Michael Conway, the nephew, he's shocked to hear of these secrets. He's like, secrets? Mr. Lynch, what do you mean? <laughs> And Mr. Lynch, he's like, well, let me clarify. And we're going to assume this guy is like the lawyer who wrote the will because it'll make this scenario even funnier in my mind. Uh-huh. Not, and not just like some guy that is hired to read it, but the actual lawyer. Yeah. So Mr. Lynch is like, well, you know, he, he didn't actually mean secrets. He just actually meant like a curse instead. <laughs> Act, like not secret secrets, but like a curse secret. <laughs> <laughs> it was secret in the fact that it was secret from you but we all knew <laughs> but we all and knew now that he's dead and i'm reading this will out loud he's saying here that i can tell you it's actually a curse not a secret <laughs> yeah and like yeah just again a secret from he kept from you yeah everyone else was in on it yeah and it's a curse it's a so, curse so my cool you're like, welcome <laughs> Yeah, so packs up a suitcase so enjoy bye referrals the parchment <laughs> She, like makes that sound yeah, like, living like... together <laughs> uh, but no Mr. Lynch he does not leave he actually kind of stays put for a bit because Michael then asks him to explain this so-called curse good like, question what does this mean <laughs> yes I would like to know more before I sell and or keep this house yeah so Mr. Lynch explains to him that legend has it and we're gonna hear about how fun Uncle Finmore Conway mm-hmm. was. okay <laughs> A legend has it that a long time ago, old Conway's partner came to the house with proof that Finmore had swindled him out of a fortune. But when this old partner left the house to go to the police, he mysteriously vanished somewhere deep in the forest and in the marshes. Okay. And the maid cuts in and she says, yeah, I know. I've seen him out there in those marshes before, but something happened to him. This man changed. He somehow became part of the swamp itself. And he's now known by locals as the Marsh Monster. (laughs) Clever, clever name, Uh right? Uh Mudsy, of course, at this point feels vindicated because he's like, see, I told you I saw someone Mm. out there. I told you. He's like still (laughs) hiding as he says it. Okay, that's a good question. (laughs) Yes, yeah, he's like not in the maid's face. But yeah, he's like, I told you I was right. You didn't believe me. Part three. (laughs) (laughs) After the reading of the will, Michael Conway, he, you know, he's like, fuck it. You guys, it's raining outside. It's dark. It's late. Your car is still in that river, I think. So just spend (laughs) the night. Part three, sleepover. (laughs) A cursed sleepover. Scary sleep, a spooky sleepover. <laughs> a spooky sleepover. sleepover. Yes, <laughs> we're retcon in these titles. I love it. So, yeah, they spend the night in this massive mansion. And I guess it's his house now. So he's like, yeah, I can yeah. do whatever I want. You guys stay here. And the maid is like putting together a room for all of them, you know, giving them their blankets and everything. And they're kind of all on edge after hearing stories about the marsh monster. And so she's trying to calm them down, saying, don't worry, the monster's never actually made its way into Conway Mansion. We've only ever seen it out in the marshes. (laughs) Don't worry, kids. You guys are safe here tonight. (laughs) But as we know, watching these shows... Anytime one of these like authority figures tells you not to worry about something, be worried, be worried, be very, (laughs) very worried. So eventually, though, the maid, she leaves the room and the gang, they just continue to discuss how like something about this place just doesn't seem right. Like the vibes are very off. Mm. And so they eventually go to sleep. And downstairs, we see that Mr. Lynch is still down there talking shop with Michael Conway. 
mm-hmm. like trying to convince Conway to sell the property to an unnamed client of his. We'll mm. do some wild speculation on that later. Perfect. Because they don't go into it, of course, in this episode. They but we say, will. If we will. <laughs> exactly. We will make up something about it. <laughs> but yeah, so Mr. Lynch apparently has this secret anonymous client. And he's like, come on, just like sell me the property. Like, just take, you don't need this. Take it off your hands. But mm-hmm. Michael, he's adamant, he declines, and he tells Mr. Lynch that, like, look, I know you said what you said about that curse and everything. I ignored it because in my family, we have a rumor <laughs> claiming cool. that it's actually a fortune of gold that's hidden somewhere on the property. So, like, I think that that's the secret that my uncle was talking about, not the oh, curse thing that you're talking about. Interesting. And Mr. Lynch, though, again, who we're going to assume is like the lawyer who wrote this thing. Yeah. A reasonable lawyer would be like, look, if there was gold here, he would want it in the will so that someone would like take it and it wouldn't just go to waste. Yeah. So why wouldn't he have told me if there's gold? You know? know like just get yeah. you know like I would know so at this point Mr. Lynch is like dude Michael I assure you there is no gold <laughs> fortune like I don't know what your family yeah. be telling you but they're lying but the I was your you uncle's have, your rich ass uncle's lawyer for lawyer, decades he paid me to write down what he owns he didn't yeah. mention no gold all he mentioned was a horrible dangerous curse okay yeah. I'm telling <laughs> he told you the important things exactly so back upstairs the gang, like I said, they were eventually able to fall asleep and get some rest. But Mudsy and Boo, for whatever reason, they're a bit restless, which I mean, probably is because they've been sleeping for the past like 200 yeah. years. So they've actually, rested I get death. it. <laughs> exactly. I get it. The phrase, you can sleep when you're dead. They're like, <laughs> no, you can't actually. Yeah. No, you can't. <laughs> and we'll never sleep again. <laughs> um, so Mudsy, he makes a trip down to the mansion's library. Of course, it has one. And he decides to read some books to try to like tire himself out and get himself to fall asleep, which, okay, Okay. can relate, Muzzy. Wake up in the middle of the night, like, all right, where's my book? God damn it, reading. Where's something (laughs) to read? But as he's perusing through the shelves, kind of like looking at what books are there, he then hears a very like loud moaning and kind of like loud, ominous sound in the distance that scares Mm -hmm. him. And then after that, he hears another weird sound that he then describes as wet foot stamps or damp even, as he says. (laughs) Okay. But as he turns to then, of course, break the fourth wall to be all dramatic as he usually is, he misses a secret doorway opening up behind him. And we see the terrifying marsh monster slowly walking through the secret doorway Mm. and making its way deeper into the house. And then only moments later, we then (laughs) hear the maid screaming from down the hallway, asking for help. Yeah, right. Checks out because she says the the marsh monster has apparently just kidnapped Michael Conway. Oh. Oh. (laughs) So, Skip... He comes downstairs, like the the maid screaming wakes everybody up, right? And so Skip and Augie and April, Elmo, all of them, they run downstairs and they're telling the maid, like, don't worry, we'll protect you. And she's like, fuck you. I don't need your protection. I'm leaving. Like, like, you also protect yourselves. Y'all lost your car in a swamp. Like, what do I think you can do for me? Right. And like. Who are you? We don't we still don't even know who you kids are. You just showed up here. You're yeah. random will witnesses. Like we yeah. we don't, I don't know want you. your help. No. Like who? What? Yeah. Goodbye. And again, you can't even drive a car and you don't have a car. So yeah. it's in the room. Yeah. So no, she says, Yeah, that's cute of you, but I'm out of here. <laughs> Goodbye. And you should be too. But the gang they decide to stay of course and they're like well we're not going to leave until we at least find Mr. Conway and make sure that he's safe before we fucking hightail it out of here and get away from this marsh monster Mm -hmm. so part four which I'm (laughs) going to also ask you to name after I get a few lines (laughs) (laughs) if you think of anything let me know yes 
after initially splitting up, so at first the gang's like, all right, uh, you know, Augie, April, and Elmo, we're going to okay. go this way. Uh, Skip, Boo, Mudsy, you guys go that way, whatever. They do this for a while. They search around a bunch of rooms. I didn't really write it down because it really is pointless. At the yeah. end, like after five nothing. Yeah, like they find nothing. And after five minutes of them just like getting trapped behind these weird trap doors and stuff, they all end up mm. falling down chambers and wind up trapped in a deep, dark, like basement cellar together again. So uh, five great. minutes of plot just like wasted in this episode, in my opinion. Or <laughs> reunited and it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, done. That's it. <laughs> So yes, once they have reunited down in this cell area, they're down there and they're like half searching for clues, half searching for a way out. Yeah. And they come across an automatic water pump of all things. Okay. And Skip theorizes that it's probably just, you know, they use it to drain out the swamp water that likely seeps down into the basement and into the house. Like, okay, yeah, sure. What's this thing for, though? I'm yeah. sitting here wondering, like, how are they going to use what? What does this have to do with the episode? Because they really are focusing and in on their it. escape. Yeah. Yes. So, meanwhile, as they're like looking at this water pump, Elmo and Boo are just running around the basement and they're playing with each other. Mm. Like, Boo mostly is being a little shit and messing with Elmo, torturing Elmo, literally torturing him. Mm -hmm. Yes, and at one point Elmo runs directly into a wall again because he was lured there oh. by Boo. I know it's yep. pretty sad, but Elmo dude's got a little thick skull because he busts <laughs> a massive hole into this brick wall. He's a thick bulldog. He's he a is. thick boy. He is. Sometimes I wonder if he is even a bulldog. He looks kind of interesting. He almost. He reminds me a little bit of like Choo Choo, where he kind of looks like a few different animals. <laughs> yeah. Choo Choo from The Amazing Chance. Yes. Yeah, just like, <laughs> here's a bunch of tough. He also like looks like, um, I feel like there was like a Looney Tunes bulldog that like had that shape to yeah. it of like super high shoulders, bulky head, and then like very skinny end. Yeah. Something like, or it's, um, it's like, it's just like the tough dog look. The tough dog look, yeah, tough like dog, either from Looney Tunes or Tom and Jerry, or also like oh, yeah. Tasmanian like Devil, but like yes, on but four a dog. legs. That's what he looks like a Tasmanian Weird. Devil, but a dog. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, Correct. so yes, whatever this animal is, Elmo the dog, <laughs> hi, the the dog hybrid thing, he <laughs> runs into this wall, creating a hole and revealing an opening that the gang can now use to escape the basement. And I will say, at this point. Upon discovering this hole, or like Elmo making this hole, the boys, Augie and Skip, have like a pretty ridiculous back and forth here, oh, no. like ri ridiculous in a savage way. Like <laughs> poor April, just caught in the middle of this. Like she never asked for it, <laughs> never did. And also, though, like all three of their identities, in my opinion, like the main identity of those three characters is just that they're like kind of in a love triangle but not actually that the two yeah. guys like april and that april is just friends with both of them yeah. like that's literally their entire identities every single like bit of dialogue that happens between the three of them <laughs> always comes back to that point because yeah. here like without boo and mudsy this show would be horrible because it would just yeah, be fighting over april the whole time <laughs> because here the boys are like, wow, look at that hole. That's awesome. Like Augie says, he's so proud of Elmo and knew that he would find a way out. And Skip's like, yeah, but your fat head can never squeeze through there. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. yeah. I At a time like this? You're going to do this right now, Skip? <laughs> right now. Like, really? Really? You want to throw the gauntlet down here? Now? Is where you want to do it? That's where you want to do it. Okay. Huh. Interesting, because at this point, like April even is like, wow, okay, that was that was a little too I far. For. He's like, guys, stop it! Like, we got to save Mike Conway. Uh, we're trying to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. So, which later, Skip is like, okay, I've got it. I've got to put. Or no, he just says, hey, I've got it. And Augie says, what measles? <laughs> <laughs> which okay, they're even now. There you go. Yeah, boys, though, so really. Like, April is not impressed by either of these. Okay. 
<laughs> she's like, you guys are funny. literally just my ride. You have a yeah. dune buggy. <laughs> and also, I should have mentioned too that April, she's not obviously into Michael Conway, but like, <laughs> it's anytime He's his name comes up. up She's the one saying it. Like she says his name so many times Only during her episode. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm into a more mature, wealthy man, He's not a, a high school guy. student. Yeah, that's literally the vibe, actually. Because, <laughs> well, yes, you'll see it when you watch it. But like, there are a lot of moments where like those two make eye contact, or he says something and like looks at her or whatever. Yeah, so these skip and augie are like out of their league here in many ways <laughs> so anyway skip at this point he tells mudsy to turn on the automatic water pump and then skip grabs the hose for the pump and he like points it at the hole in the wall and immediately blasts an even bigger hole around it which allows oh. them to escape and oh. also makes me severely question the structural integrity of this house <laughs> <Holes. Yeah, laughs> if, <hose. laughs> if a hose and a dog <laughs> Can, also, like, you guys are in the basement. An entire wall. And this exactly it's about to in, on you. in like a marshy area. So there's already a lot. Like this, <laughs> this house is not. Yeah, Michael Conway no. actually does need to sell this shit. Yeah, this is gonna be a money pit. Dangerous. Yes. So once they all leave the cellar, Skip tells everyone to keep their eyes open for clues. To which Augie responds, "He's not done with them yet." He says, "Ha! You wouldn't know a clue if it hit you on the head." And at that exact moment, a weird looking key falls on Skip's head. Oh, just from the ceiling? No, so we actually do see like a creepy hand sneaking out of something, oh. like a little window or something, and it drops it right on Skip. Something, uh, I don't know. Like they don't see the hand, but we do. The The owner of the hand was originally just going to drop it like into the hall, but then they heard the insult and they were like, this is going to be good. <laughs> Let me aim Got for Skip. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you know what, Skip? I kind of want you to get April. I'll I'll put a clue on your head. I know you're not that <laughs> yeah. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so at that exact moment, though, when they see this key, they're like, well, what is this key for? And Mudsy says, well, I know. It's a key for a crypt at a graveyard. Which, okay, what? Well, I don't know. But he does, he says it very excitedly. He's like, oh, my God, I can contribute to the conversation. <laughs> I, dead things. I know I all know. about death. Yes, <laughs> it's a crypt. And a crypt must be at a graveyard. <laughs> so the gang, for whatever reason, seeing as this, wow. apparently this key to a crypt at a graveyard landed literally on their heads, they decide to go to a graveyard and open up someone's crypt, which I guess. Wow, so think, grave robbing. Grave robbing. Classic movie to move. They quickly crossed over into that sort of territory. I mean, I think Camp actually this, this will be their first uh, crime of the episode. See, that is a good point. I never, I didn't think about that. And I got to go back and track it with your episode last week. But they don't commit as much crime as the other teenage vigilante groups. No, they covered. like politely knock on this yeah. mansion door. Yeah, well, they did not. Like, they waited for the owner to actually welcome them in. And even when they yes. went there, like... They were just going to ask for directions. They weren't like, hey, let's yeah. go in that house and like find safety. They were saying, hey, let's go to that house and just ask for help. And ask permission. Yeah, like they were never going to just do the typical B&E as, you know, Mystery yeah. Inc. and the Chans and... Grave robbing. Grave robbing. That, that is the line they will cross. <laughs> Without hesitation. An easy line. <laughs> they were going to like, do look. it before they even knew that they had a key to a crypt. <laughs> They're like, look, we already have a dead guy with us. He said it was cool if we did it. So it's cool, right? Okay, it's cool. Yeah. He said he wouldn't have been offended if someone robbed his grave. <laughs> but so we have to assume no one else would. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Part five. The last Ooh. part. We have arrived at the graveyard. Mm. The gang, they find a crypt and they whip out the key to open it up. Great. And of course, the door in again, classic fashion, it just actually opens up for them. They don't even like before they can even put they the need key the key. totally <laughs> in. So after all this time, they didn't need the key, actually. <laughs> and at yeah. this point, at this point, well, I will say before I go on to this little tangent, because I got a little angry at this part of the episode, I will say. 
Okay. At this point, though, Augie is like, it's almost like someone was expecting us. They just opened the door for us. And Skip says, yeah, and I think whoever it is has us right where they want us. And so at this point, I'm like, yeah, wait, they're right. I think someone probably was expecting them. And this is all a yeah. trap, apparently. Yeah. So why did they drop the key on Skip's head? How yeah. Did they, <laughs> how did they know that the gang would know that it was a key to a crypt? Because they don't know that Mudsy and Boo are there. So they just yeah. drop a random key <laughs> in on a their mansion. Head and say, Maybe exactly like they could think it was a key to a safe somewhere, and or like every it, door in the mansion. And now I'm realizing, what if it actually wasn't a key to that crypt? Because also Mudsy is wrong about a lot of stuff. Like everything he says is wrong all the time. <laughs> yeah. So what if it was that, and like whoever the villain is is just like, oh god, these Fuck. stupid fucking kids, like runs to the <laughs> fucking graveyard. Running to the crypt. <laughs> Did they just say they're going to go to the crypt? That key is clearly for the lot for the like safe in the, the center that they were just in. Yeah, <laughs> it like says it on there. Like, there. There's like a little um, tag on it. Sell yeah. key, and they're like, yeah. starts with a C. Starts with a C. Crypt. It's for a crypt. Oh my god. Are you so, make yeah. here like on the floor above them, like someone running? <laughs> yeah, running and like they hear a door slamming. The the yeah. <laughs> and like when they get to the graveyard, they hear like someone running through the grass or something. Someone's like, so out of somebody. breath. <laughs> 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 as the door opens <laughs> ah, which is actually hilarious because as they then walk through this crypt they like <laughs> hear the noises of someone and they're like moaning and groaning because <laughs> so they just is. sprint they're just tired <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like patting like fanning themselves <laughs> they're like "Ooh, what's that cool breeze and yeah it's just the person fanning themselves Ooh, a ghost in here i feel cold <laughs> hair <laughs> yes this, you know what this villain if nothing is working for it they are they're putting I mean, in the work what they're working for we don't quite know yet no. so it's been pretty vague but they're working yeah. for it they are working for it uh -huh. so yes they're walking through this crypt essentially down this like coffin lined hallway which, by the way, again, I got mad because I was like, well, this isn't a crypt, by the way, then. Like, yeah. you see it from the outside. Like, this is like a mausoleum or a morgue. Like, this is not a crypt. Yeah, mudsy. Again, I'm no crypt expert, but yeah, <laughs> exactly. Mudsy. <laughs> again, like you being said, super get it wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And so as they're walking through all of these coffins that are just literally lined up everywhere, like they're lined up Great. on the walls, they're just lined up through the hallways. Great. They hear, again, these groaning sounds echoing off of the walls. And they start to ask if like someone is in there with them. Like, oh, my God, we, maybe we aren't alone. There might be someone in here. Well, and the door just, just open. So probably. <laughs> it did just open and on its own right after they say this it slams shut and we hear it oh. lock itself from the outside oh. not great aka the viewers we see the marsh monster actually outside of the tomb or the crypts whatever you want to <laughs> call it locking them in but inside they're like mm -hmm. oh no it must be a ghost or something like we don't know what it is Mm -hmm. And so Skip, he then notices, right after this door closes, he notices one of the coffins slowly creaking open. Oh, yeah. And no. then the gang, yeah, I'm 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 never, I was never in this. In this I, crypt I said with, a crypt. Like, yeah. Mudsy, you're going down, you're already dead. You're doing that on your own, buddy. I'll yeah, let us know what here. you find in there. <laughs> and the gang turns around and they look closer at this coffin that is slowly opening and they all gasp and say oh my goodness it couldn't be no way and they see that it's mike conway just waking up from what is likely a very severe head wound that he absolutely needs to get checked out by the <laughs> way because he's like uh like he's so foggy they're asking like mike is that you and he's like i hope so oh, like no. i don't know and he's like just before everything went black i must have oh, seen God. the marsh monster attack me and i was like did you sir, say everything went black sir my you guy have a concussion that you just slept on 
Oh no, <laughs> bro. Go get you need mm-hmm. to go see a doctor immediately. Go get cat scan. Yes. <laughs> And at that exact moment, thankfully, Augie, who I guess is just kind of like, he's like, hey, a concussion. I got like 20 of them for playing football. <laughs> Weak, bro. Weak. This is your first concussion? Please, I black out I every other weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Augie, he's like uninterested in what Conway is saying. And he's just like moseying around, rifling through this mausoleum. And he sees a casket that's standing up against the wall decides to open it for whatever reason right. and All those sees, concussions. he thinks it's like, the door it is because he notices that it leads to a staircase <laughs> yeah oh concussions may actually be good for us <laughs> you know what <laughs> wait a second yeah um hey, points to Augie. you know they're they're onto something here Augie may mm-hmm. be a little bit smarter than we thought so yeah. They see that there's a staircase going down through this casket. They all take it to run out of there, find some safety. Do they have Conway with them? Yeah, yeah. They're dragging Conway's him with them. Them. <laughs> He's on two feet. He's walking and everything now. Okay, He's great. even telling him, like, be careful going down those stairs, guys. It's dangerous. To which I say, sir, can you even stand up right now? Yeah. Sir, did you get hit in the head and then fall? They just That's how they got your body here is they pushed you down some stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because he was like still awake talking to mr lynch and everything so like he was probably yeah like going downstairs to get a glass of water something like Someone that just, and then doop. some villain just boom knocks him right down the stairs wow. yikes okay yeah terrifying you hate to see it um yeah because you're gonna forget about it all when you black out <laughs> so <laughs> Hilariously, though, as the gang is like walking down this secret staircase, we then see another nearby casket or coffin, whatever, open up. And the butler, Henry, his head just pops out and he just starts laughing menacingly as the gang makes their way out of oh. the mausoleum. So at this that's point, suspicious. I'm like, oh, that's, that's pretty suspicious, Henry. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So the gang somehow winds back up in Conway Mansion. I guess maybe the secret passageway has some underground tunnel system that takes you back there. I don't know, because they find themselves coming out, I think actually it's of the same secret passageway in the library that we mm. saw the marsh monster come out of earlier in the episode. Okay. Yes. And when they get in here, they look down and they see marsh monster foot tracks or footprints Mm. everywhere, which obviously is very unsettling and is a sign that he's somewhere in the house, most likely. Yes. And so soon after that, over some PA system, I guess, that's in the mansion. (laughs) Hanna-Barbera loves a PA system. (laughs) They love some evening announcements or some (laughs) random announcements because we then hear... I guess it's the monster. Maybe it's a ghost. It's probably Uh a ghost because there's no indication up to this point in the episode that the monster speaks or knows English because all we ever hear it doing is grunting. So I'm guessing it's some ghost of some sort who's over this PA system saying, this is your last warning. Leave Conway Mansion at once or be doomed forever. And Mike... After, I guess he probably did black out and forgot about like the secret treasure that he thinks is hidden there. Because at this point, (laughs) in like a millisecond, he's like, no, no, like, I'll go. I'm out of here. Like, sure. Like, I'm, I'm gone. I'm I'm out. I'm out, dude. And the announcer, I I literally typed the announcer. (laughs) Like this is like a sports program. I was about to, we cut two guys in the street with his like headset on. (laughs) All right. And we're getting word that Mike Conway will be leaving the house. So what, <laughs> we're going to we're going to cut over to the Marsh Monster now and hear his thoughts on these recent developments. So Marsh Monster, that was a great <laughs> fight you had out there. Any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> this just in, you heard it here first, everyone. Back to you, John. Back to you. The kids are just like shaking in the mansion, like <laughs> scared. All right. Well, also, that's it from Conway Mansion. <laughs> also, this is your last warning. Where was the first warning? This is our <laughs> first warning first? we've had. I guess like this is, I guess he's, this dude has clearly been spying on the house because he knows mm-hmm. like Mr. Lynch warned you there was a curse. The maid oh, yeah. said that there was some sort of curse. Like 
I guess it can be implied that if someone tells you something is cursed, they're also probably yeah. low key telling you to get the fuck out of that or, place. Yeah. Or so, we just didn't I, see Conway get told this. Yeah, maybe he, he was told that right before the March before Monster. He got like, yeah. <laughs> the March Monster's <laughs> like, if you don't leave, I'm going to have to hit you in the head with this. He's like, well, I'm not leaving. Bonk. <laughs> All right, John, play that back in slow motion. We see he holds the bat in his signature move before assaulting the bear. Yes, Kathy. It's it's called the Marsh Monster Swing. You know, we first saw it way back in 69. Really paved the way for Marsh Monsters everywhere. Actually, we're getting word the Marsh Monster is available for comment. Can we can we cut to the Marsh Monster? Is the Marsh Monster at like one of those press tables or whatever? It's like, Marsh Monster, camera's going what off. inspired you to use that movement in the bat swing when you knocked out Lo- Mike Conway? <laughs> <laughs> Journalists scribbling down. Yeah, good cameras like snapping <laughs> pictures. There's, There's a good. coach like just off the side, arms crossed. <laughs> nodding Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good good (laughs) oh god (laughs) yeah um (laughs) the announcer is like (laughs) after mike says he'll leave the announcer is like you must never return and mike he's again he's committed at this point he's like i won't i promise like i'm gone i'm out of here yeah so he then looks over to the gang and he's like come on guys like let's get out of here great and April firmly responds, no, Mike, we're staying. <laughs> Which I'm like, this one, I'm like, wait, why? Your objective was to save Mike Conway and make sure and he's safe. And you yeah. did. And Mike hears this and he's like, you're staying? He's, or, so she says, we're staying. And Mike's like, <laughs> he doesn't say this, but essentially I'm paraphrasing. He's like, no, you're staying. <laughs> <laughs> I am not staying. <laughs> I'm gonna like you guys can stay and handle this yeah. on your own. Then, like Goodbye. he says, like you're not ha- you're not getting my help. Bye. <laughs> I'm getting in my car. We could have taken the entire time to find help for you and leaving. And leaving. Oh, that rainstorm that ended hours ago. <laughs> it's been super dry. But right as Mike leaves the house, or at least the room. Mm-hmm. The Marsh Monster then literally in Kool-Aid Man style busts through the <laughs> wall. I mean, he just like busts right into this room Again, and starts house chasing integrity. the gang. Bad. <laughs> Very bad. <laughs> like Mike Conway, come on, this is a sign, dude. This is bad multiple signs now. And so they're chasing, or the, the monster is chasing the gang all throughout the mansion. And eventually the gang like backed into a corner. They decide to launch a piano that's like on wheels. They like launch this thing down a hallway at the marsh monster, slamming into him, like sending him even further down the hallway and slamming all of this, the marsh monster and the piano into the wall that also has like a fireplace in it so oh, like into the fire, a brick fireplace and a wall oh my yeah. god surprised the wall didn't fall down based on what we've seen thus far it did <laughs> the, not the whole wall the fireplace literally my very next line the fireplace <laughs> falls apart like a bunch of legos <laughs> Okay, well, at least they're consistent with it. Yeah, yeah. great. I feel okay about but that. I guess I'm glad that the fireplace fell down and not the wall, the whole wall, or did the whole wall? Actually, I think not the whole wall, but yeah, there's probably a whole it's one not the wall too. If the fire, it's not great. It's definitely not great. He's so, gonna have to put fixer upper on this real estate ad. <laughs> He's gonna like put a sign fixer upper on the door, and then the door will like fall down. <laughs> someone's going to touch it and just disintegrate windows falling out shutters falling down normal it's normal so yes the fireplace falls apart like legos and amazingly though once all of these bricks are laying out on the ground the fallen bricks begin to glow a solid (laughs) vibrant gold revealing the Conway fortune. The same fucking plot as Scooby-Doo. Literally. 
literally, I got to figure out, man, what year was that episode? Or no, that's right. That was one of the newer ones. That was from the What's New Scooby-Doo. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's yes. right. But still, a classic they took from this. Move. Exactly. So this time Scooby-Doo copied off of them. Uh-huh. Yes, but it's all the same shit. This anyways. has definitely happened multiple times. Is like the yeah, wall probably- is the... Yeah. It's the treasure. The, the are actually gold. Too. I think it. I think yeah. you're right. I think you're right. This is not Multiple. the first or this is not the second trip. time we've seen this. <laughs> Honestly, and I love it. Same. Like I'm considering doing this. The person that reads my will, like, most of my fortune is going to go towards them reading it. The other is going to be painting bricks to look or painting gold bars to look <laughs> like bricks. <laughs> like um, hiding I know in my house. We've talked about how you haven't watched Arrested Development many times on this show, yeah. but there's a whole ongoing thing that they have like a frozen banana stand on like a pier. And at one point they're like, there's always money in the banana stand. And the son thinks it means like, oh, if we burn it down, like we can get insurance money for it. And so he does it and then goes back yeah, to the family and they're like, no, we lined the walls of the banana stand with like millions of dollars. <laughs> and it's just in flames everywhere. <laughs> not insurance fraud oh anyway. my god like no we meant literally there's always there's always cash. money in <laughs> the banana stand also like i feel like an insurance payout from a stand catching on fire wouldn't be that massive not gonna be good not gonna be that good i feel like they probably were pissed with what they got from that. Yeah, it's not great. so anyways um so, yes, classic Hanna-Barbera plot here. We see that this massive fireplace was actually the Conway fortune the whole time. And so at this point, the gang's like, wow, oh, my God, you were like, Mike Conway was right. Like, there was a secret. Maybe I guess there was a secret and a curse because, like, there's still a double monster secret. here. Yeah, double secret. Twice the secrets, twice the fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. The uncle again. He's like a fun guy. He's a fun guy. He, he just <laughs> loves messing with people. He loves it. Oh, the other episode it happened. Sorry, it was your holiday episode with the toy factory. Yes, yes. Remember, and yeah, they that, that was the, the other wall. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, again a, pa- a power washer again, exposing they do it all. things. <laughs> oh, yeah. so it just, it, a it snowman, just hit me. It like a power washer, a swamp monster, and a piano. <laughs> Keep these things on hand, folks. They're all the same. Yeah, coming (laughs) soon to a cartoon near you. (laughs) Um, So the gang having the marsh monster now trapped under this pile Mm -hmm. of bricks slash gold and like a piano, piano. wall, all of these things. He's not going Uh anywhere. So Skip is like, all right, let's take this mask off. Let's go. But as, like, they're reaching for the mask, they're also, like, slightly interrupted by Elmo and Boo, who are, like, running around being little shits. Like, Elmo's barking at a door because Boo was, like, hiding behind it or something uh-huh. like that. And they're like, guys, stop playing. We're trying to unmask this criminal over Yeah, our big here. moment's happening. And so they reach to take off the mask. And Grace, would you like to guess who this marsh monster is? And would you like me to run back through our list of suspects? Yes, do that first. All right. So we've got Mr. Lynch, the attorney slash estate executor dude who's got an anonymous uh-huh. client who uh-huh. wants to buy this property and swears that there is no secret, only a curse. Okay. We've got the butler, Henry, who clearly hates Finmore Conway for leaving him only 50 cents and at and least once in the past tried to steal the fortune once and before. And loves sleeping in coffins. <laughs> and lo- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> importantly <laughs> most importantly and then we've got the maid sweet martha loved by mike conway also only received 50 cents and apparently maybe also is included in the help that tried to steal the fortune mm. from finmore conway but also has sworn to see this marsh monster somewhere deep in the marshes and believes in the curse of the old partner who was Mm. robbed by Finmore Conway and then we've got actually the ghost of Finmore Conway's old partner the guy who was <laughs> robbed and had a grudge yeah. did he actually leave escape and get you know lost in the swamps and turn into this marsh monster like maybe they're going to try to pull this mask off and there is no mask it's real face <laughs> yeah. or Finmore Conway himself did he say he got 
I was just going to say, or do we have the ghost of Fenmore Conway and or Fenmore Conway himself? He's a fun guy, as he's we've discovered. Guy. Maybe he's just been fucking with him the whole time. And last but not least, we mm-hmm. do have Mike Conway, the nephew mm-hmm. who has, has inherited this old mansion and believes mm-hmm. the secret and not the curse. Who mm-hmm. do we think it is? Quite a list of characters. <laughs> so I think that it was the lawyer, Mr. Lynch, and okay. that he, in reality, was the old business partner. And mm-hmm. Michael Conway was just too young to actually remember any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I also have some wild speculation about this business partner situation and to the fortune, which then would erase my guess. But I'm just going to say it was the the lawyer. Okay. Well, I'm going to say I like your guess. I do like your guess. I'm going to talk more about your guess in just a second and how much I like it. But unfortunately, the monster is revealed to be Mike Conway. (laughs) Oh, I thought he was in the room with them. (laughs) Now he left, remember? He left. Oh, yeah. But wait, before you get too deep into it being Mike Conway, because the gang is in disbelief. And I'm also in disbelief because to me, I'm like, well, wait, Mike Conway didn't, I mean, what is, what does he gain out of being the marsh monster, right? Like he's got property. Like he doesn't, why does he need to steal? What's going on here? This is poorly explained. Yeah. And the gang, they're in disbelief and they're further confused when they hear a voice behind them saying, that's right. And the Mike Conway in that Halloween costume is a fake and they turn around and they see (laughs) Mike Conway (laughs) with like ropes around him like ropes draped that have just been untied that he's like throwing off of his shoulders he's also a fun guy what an entrance this whole family I love this family Conways are fun also (laughs) what also very much so what (laughs) They take another mask off. And, they, and so Mike Conway, he's like pointing at this phony. And he comes out of the door that Elmo was barking at before. Oh, good boy. Showing that he was actually being held captive back there. And so Mike, the real Mike, explains that sweet Martha, the maid, and Henry, the butler, were behind <laughs> the entire plot the entire Mm, conspiracy they love trying to steal fortunes they do apparently this is not their first attempt (laughs) no and the gang then takes over for mike at this point they're like oh okay we got it we see what happened so april they don't know never find clues we'll talk more about that in a second um i hope i remember there's like three notes of wild speculation that I'm like we're gonna get to that in a second we're gonna get to that it's all building up just wait we're gonna have a great conversation here in a minute so April's like Martha must have made up the monster legend and the curse story and Skip says that it must have been her idea or the idea to get Mike's crooked look-alike to sign the mansion over to them must have also been her idea so they're just like putting everything together for us because i was like none of this was explained in the episode Wait, but yes look-alike? this isn't a mask it's not a mask <laughs> it's his look-alike it's a, a dude. double it's a dude it's his son it's a guy who looks like him so i'm even more confused grace i'm like how okay all right this is how racist family in <laughs> like <a> clone people <laughs> what okay so Mike, at this point mike's like yep you got it like that's exactly what happened martha made up the monster legend in the curse story and the idea was to get my crooked lookalike to sign the mansion over to her and now thanks to you guys the conway family fortune has been found and it's safe and so this is the last line, and then we're just going to explode into like <laughs> complaining and wild speculation about this. Okay. I'm so flabbergasted. Mike, Mike says he's glad that the mystery is all cleared up. This is like the next morning or later that night. We see the police arrive. Sweet Martha and Henry the butler are in the back of the police car. They're, they've been arrested. They're going to jail. 
the look but like is the back. look he's nowhere he's not back he is not the in the swamp. car <laughs> yeah he puts the mask back on i think well we'll speculate about him in a second too maybe <laughs> he's just gone but okay. mike says there is one thing left that he can't quite explain because <clears throat> he could have sworn that he, when he was locked up in that closet someone untied his ropes but he doesn't believe in ghosts, so he just mm. doesn't really know how, how to explain it and just, like, kind of shakes it off. But it was Boo, hilariously. Boo's like, <laughs> no big deal. I, I just flashed all the ropes. Right. <laughs> but regardless, Mike's like, I can't shake the feeling that the house might still be haunted somehow because you also see, like, Mudsy, like, behind him kind of just, like, doing weird shit or whatever. Uh-huh. So which April responds, well, if there is a ghost, I bet you it's a groovy ghost. (laughs) And that's the last line of the episode, which in my opinion, also like wasted opportunity. She could have just said like, I bet it's a funky phantom. And then boom, credits roll. How fun would that have been? (laughs) Wasted opportunity. I feel like Um, they didn't have the title for the show yet. (laughs) They didn't. I'm so glad you said that because in my mind, when I heard that, I was like, I wonder if the show was originally supposed to be called Groovy Groovy Ghost. (laughs) Probably. Um, probably yeah yeah, yeah they changed so. it they were probably so pissed and that's the end of the episode <laughs> wow so, um, a few wow things. let's uh, hear it uh let's hear your speculation first of all, about this i agree 100 with your guess in my opinion and i i built him up to seem more shady than he actually is in this mm. episode because why well, trust a lawyer never trust a lawyer Surely. they're evil um <laughs> But yeah, like I thought it was going to be Mr. Lynch too. And in my mind, I was thinking that his anonymous client was like a descendant of the old partner or was the old partner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or alternatively, I like your theory that he himself was the old partner somehow who like, yeah, uh, uh, Mike Conway doesn't remember him, et cetera. So he's like, yeah, yeah, Yeah. I don't don't know you, et cetera, whatever. Um, because I thought that would have been way juicier. That would have made more sense. Yeah. And no, I feel like it's kind of a cop like. out. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a cop out to just say it's it's Mike Conway's look alike and never reveal who this dude actually is. Yeah. Or how he knows the maid and the butler. Yeah. Or explaining any more of how the maid and the butler put this plan together. All we see yeah. is the butler popping his head out of a coffin and laughing. Yeah, what's that part about? <laughs> Which also then when I had to do a lot of reflecting on this episode, I just sat <laughs> back and thought like, so none, like a lot of this was unnecessary because yeah. if the butler was behind it and he's in this mausoleum, like laughing, like, but they also were the ones that gave them the keys to the crypt. They wanted them to go to the crypt, but that's where they found Mike. So I was thinking, okay, maybe that was the fake Mike. Maybe yeah. they told the fake Mike to get in there and act like he was, you know, knocked right. out. Real Mike. They wanted the kids to the find him time. there. Yeah, exactly. They wanted to find him in there, bring him back to the mansion. But that just seems so difficult. Like, why go through yeah. all of that? Why not just yeah. not, not lo- if the real Mike is this- locked up in the closet, then just like parade out the fake Mike. The kids don't know that they were asleep when the monster. This is why the him. other attempts to steal the fortune fail. <laughs> If this was the caliber, as did this one, that's why the uncle was so sassy in the will, being like, for all your foiled, fucked up attempts, you get 50 cents. But also, I mean, unless they kill the real Mike Conway, this wouldn't work. So, I mean, I guess they must have wanted to kill the right Mike Conway, the real Mike Conway, because it's just like my last episode with the, uh, not the piranha plot. God, I wish. (laughs) What a great episode. Uh, The the claim judge jabber, right? With that will. Just holding on to a will or like, you know, a deed doesn't mean that you, it's not a bearer bond. You don't just hold it and say, okay, I own this house now because I'm holding the deed. So if if they, if like the real Mike Conway doesn't, title give title to you then you don't have title like you yeah, just sue like, you he's got money he's the fake one coming in to the lawyer's office the lawyer comma who knows the real mike conway and is going to ask yeah. for like identity verification yeah does the fake one also have his social security number yeah exactly like all of that information i mean yeah 
Yeah, again, like you said, it's no surprise that Finmore Conway, the decedent, knew that his help, the help was trying to like steal his fortune because these are the fucking plots that they're coming up with to do it. It's like so obscure and stupid and over the top. Yeah, Yeah. like even these stupid teenagers could like thwart it. Um, So, yeah. Wow, that was incredible. Um, They are going to do poorly in jail, I think. They're going to try and break out, I have a feeling, and it's going to be will. bad. And it will be bad. Uh, yeah, because yeah, apparently only two of them are in there, too. So the third one, is <laughs> the Mike, one. Mike's lookalike, who actually I think maybe they might have just killed. I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. I'm concerned because, yeah, he was not in the sheriff's car. And yeah, no, he they were all right they were like circling. Swamp. They were circling around him, looking at him with like this pile of bricks on top of him and a piano. Like, well, what do we do with this dude? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he either is buried in the swamp or is returning to the swamp from which he came. Mm-hmm. One of the two. Yes. Wow. Uh, that so was. Yeah. Can I? Can I say I have wow. one more? One more little thing that yes I did here because you when you were reading through your script last week they were all so funny all of the mudsy quotes like (laughs) funny random things that he says throughout the episode because we love how sassy he is yes so I knew that we would end up going on tangents if I like had them in the main part of my script so what I didn't know as well I put all of his funniest quotes like in a separate section (laughs) so it's like a list Yes, let me hear them in the full. And I was like, we can we can do one of two things here. I can either just read them to you and we can chat about them because they're very funny, or I can read them and you try to guess like what he said them in response to, or like at what point in the plot he said them. Let's do that, and then you can correct me because they're all so uh, they have to do with nothing that's happening in the moment. Uh, Okay, no, these are actually there. There are ones where like. Some of them you might be able to guess, and some of them like, okay. what the fuck? Yeah, like, okay, so the, so the okay. first one, and I will say they're pretty much in chronological order of the episode, so it's like right. the first one is from early on in the episode, right? Okay. All right, <laughs> he says, who's afraid? Who's afraid? Whom do you think discovered electricity? It was I when I told John Hancock to go fly a kite. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> You can't even get what at the time was your own pop culture, correct? It's not even history for him. That's just pop culture in the moment. It's pop culture, yeah. Current events. <laughs> All right, that's when he was going off into the woods. Just before, yeah. It was like when yeah. lightning was striking as they were in the dune buggy, right before they yeah. crashed into the river. Yes. And okay. hilariously, okay. April in response says... There is, he's like, that was Ben Franklin who flew the kite. And Mudsy then says, there is more than one kite, you know. <laughs> he, he's right. All right. He's right. He's always right. <laughs> he's, he's not wrong. Yeah. It's, it's you know, a little column A, column B. A broken clock is always right twice a day. Okay. Just like Mudsy. <laughs> who like lived Muzzy. in a broken clock for 200 years. <laughs> Oh my god, is that his whole thing? They have to make 80% of what he says wrong and 20% right? (laughs) That's great. So, okay, the next quote. No, 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 I'm too young to be a victim. (laughs) I have no idea. (laughs) That's incredible. (laughs) <laughs> but I imagine it is a moment where she's abandoning the rest of the gang and like leaving them for dead. It is when the maid was warning them that if they don't leave, they'll be the monster's next victim. Like, uh, it, yeah. yeah, like I'm out of here. If you don't leave, you'll be next, etc. Yeah. <laughs> and Great. he's like covering his own. Oh. No, no. <laughs> okay. Next quote. <laughs> next quote. Um this is probably the best one of the entire episode. <clears throat> I had a homely cousin once called Marsha. She was a monster, but I wasn't scared of her. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Poor Marsha. Um, uh, probably just any time he interacts yeah. with her. <laughs> it's essentially, Skip is there. He's searching through a hallway with Skip, and Skip's like, Keep your eyes open, Mudsy. We might bump into the marsh monster. <laughs> so, like, yeah, he's just like, 
Uh. My cousin Marsha. <laughs> it's just like no Marsh monster. Mutsi doesn't Mutsi. care. <laughs> no, Mutsi is like in his own world. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Three more here. Um, this one. Put up your dukes. Put up your dukes or your duchess even. <laughs> Um, I don't remember Muzzy actually trying to fight anyone. That is what's happening. Yeah, I probably didn't totally talk about that in the script, but yeah, at like one point, chasing. Muzzy, yeah, exactly. He's chasing Skip and Muzzy, and Muzzy's like, oh, fight him for a second while you get away, <laughs> Skip. Yeah. All right. Good, two good. more. This one's pretty easy, actually. Um, but Muzzy's like, water pump, heavens to Hessians. George Washington and I could have used one of these when we crossed the Potomac River. Those old sailboats were leaky, you know? <laughs> Mudsy. Mudsy, obviously, yes, when they discovered the water pump, that was pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I also, I love that one in particular because he said Hessians, which we've talked about in a previous episode of yeah. this. I think actually you you talked about it in the Headless Horseman episode. And Wait, um, didn't, yeah, wasn't it also Washington crossed the Delaware? Also, that <laughs> yes. that's why true. I originally said, Oh, Mudsy, yeah, because as, literally that's what April says. She says, Oh, Mudsy, it was the Delaware River, <laughs> and Augie is like, And it was a rowboat. And Mudsy says, In response, Answer me one question Were you there? That's all I want to know. Were you there? Muzzy is sick of him correcting his shit. <laughs> he is. He's done with it. And that's actually like the last thing that like the last historical reference he makes in the episode for the most part. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Were you there? And so this <laughs> is the fifth and final or the how many six? I don't know. The last uh, <laughs> very notable Muzzy quote. Guess when he said it. He said <laughs> Oh, you know I'm allergic to ghosts. <laughs> um, was that when it was the PA system? Uh, thinking it was a ghost. <laughs> no, but that would have been good too. Yeah. That's <laughs> no, it was while they were walking through the crypt and they heard like the moaning and groaning oh, yeah. noises. Even like, funnier to be in the crypt saying that. Yeah, yeah. As a ghost who has uh, a cat ghost. Yes. yes. So yeah. Wow. Those He's were the perfect. muddy quotes. It was like we could As either always. just read through them. You could guess where they came from. Or alternatively, I was gonna say, guess who said this quote? But they were all muddy quotes. So <laughs> and like, you there's can't no say point. his quotes without his voice. Exactly. It's so. impossible. Physically impossible. <laughs> yeah. So that wow. is officially the end. Perfect. That's all I've got. Yes, thank you. Incredible job. Thank you. Yep. And um, I can't wait till next week to hear hear what you've got. We'll continue (laughs) on with this absolutely ridiculous show. Not quite as ridiculous as Jabberjaw, I will say, but it is getting very close. So, yeah. Wow, great work. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. And so until next week, who should they tell about this podcast? I think you should tell... um, a uh american revolution historian Mm, i don't know probably find a professor find i don't know someone who's written a historical nonfiction book about it let them know let them hear all these musty quotes and Mm -hmm. flinch at every time he says one of them (laughs) so inaccurately toss their phds into the trash the ground yeah. Uh, who else did they this is worthless <laughs> um so after that you should tell surprisingly i don't think we've done this you should tell a maid oh yeah i don't think we've ever done that i could be wrong I don't think we have either. it doesn't seem like when we've done yeah because as sweet martha was in this episode mm. they're usually pretty sweet people until you find out they're trying to steal your estate from you but until that, that point, one like, they're really nice that one small thing but like that's why they're really nice to you because they just want yeah. you to like gift you some shit Give them around world. yeah so tell a maid i'm sure they'll love the way all these 70s cartoons depicted them and why they're like old plump ladies or like very young 
attractive evil. ladies. Yeah, I'm like Trying evil nonetheless, Jane. though. Yes, always. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Perfect. Wow. Great job. I'm so excited to watch this one. It's great. You'll love it. Yes. And I'm excited Perfect. to watch the episode that you do next week. So we'll Let's see you guys soon. Right. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Saturday Morning Mysteries. If you enjoyed this episode, please share, rate, review, leave us a like, and drop a comment. We post episodes every Saturday and bonus tune tangents whenever we feel like it. So please subscribe so you don't miss the shenanigans. And if you want to follow us on YouTube, click the bell under the YouTube subscribe button to receive notifications when new videos are posted. And if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we have no idea what you're listening to us on. So just hit the big subscribe button on whatever app you're using. We we believe in you. Give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Satmore Mist, all the abreeds. And let us know if you have any episode or show requests by emailing Saturday Morning Mysteries at gmail.com. Thanks to Jenna Kendall for the logo design and to Ava Sakiki for the music used during this week's episode. See y'all groovy kids next week on Saturday Morning Mysteries.